Okay, so a bunch of people have asked me how to stream in 3D models into your AR app at runtime. Now, why would you wanna do this in the first place? Well, say for example, you want your app to have dynamic AR content that can be updated from a server without actually having to push an update to the app on the app store. Or maybe your AR app like us augments houses and these 3D model files are huge. Uh, you don't wanna have to package these with the app, but you wanna be able to download these at runtime from your server as the user needs them. Now, while you can stream in OBJ or FBX files into your AR app at runtime, uh, I don't think this is like very good practice because they're not going to come with the textures or animations or, you know, they may not end up looking correctly. So what you can do is make an asset bundle in Unity that allows you to package a 3D model with all of its materials, textures, animations, etc., and stream in that asset bundle into your app at runtime. So yeah, these are pretty quick and easy to get set up. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so if we go to the Unity docs and we look up asset bundles, you can see that it says an asset bundle is an archive file that contains platform specific non-code assets, such as models, textures, prefabs, audio clips, or even entire scenes that Unity can load at runtime. So the important thing to point out here is non-code assets. So an asset bundle can include pretty much anything as long as it doesn't have a C-sharp script or a special shader that is not compiled at runtime. Like for example, that is not included in the project. So you can do pretty much anything here but you cannot introduce new C-sharp scripts or new shaders that are not included in the project. So anyway, if we go to uh, github.com slash third dash Aurora and we go to repositories, I have a repository here uh, called Asset Bundles. This contains everything that we need um, to load Asset Bundles into AR. So uh, download this project and let's open it up in Unity. Okay, so once this project is opened up in Unity, um, Basically, this is the same AR Foundation project that we've been working from in all the other videos on this channel. Uh, it's just a basic AR Foundation project that allows us to place an object onto the ground and detect the planes and the point clouds and everything. And then uh, with this particular repo, I just added some extra stuff to uh, load and play with these asset bundles. So first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to create some asset bundles. So this content parent is what gets moved when you click on the screen. Um, when you click on like an AR plane or something, this is what moves the content. So this content parent gets moved. Anything under it is going to appear in AR. So for example, here we have this cube. Um, let's, uh, let's do, let's create a 3D object. Let's, let's create a capsule. And then we're gonna move this up a little bit. We're gonna make just basically three different things that we can place here. Cause if you go back to our game view, you can see that I have three buttons to change the AR content, that is capsule, sphere, and cube. So we have capsule and cube, let's right click and add a 3D object sphere. Put this outside in that scope there. And then we have our three models here. So in the materials folder, I have three different color materials. Um, let's just make the capsule black, the sphere can be blue, and the cube can be green. Okay, so we have three different models here. And this is what we're gonna uh, turn into asset bundles. So first thing that we need to do is make them prefabs. So I made a prefab folder, it's empty. We wanna just drag each one of these into our prefab folder. And this is going to make them prefabs. So to create an asset bundle, we first need to name it. So this capsule, uh, we're just going to name it capsule. I have all these names in here already, but um, if you wanted to do a new name like this, for example, you would do, well, let's go just remove unused names. And now we only have that capsule name. Uh, so cube, we're going to do a new name. We're just going to call this lowercase cube. And then this sphere, we're going to call this lowercase sphere. Okay, so all of our asset bundles are named. Now, uh, what we need to do is you need a script, an editor script that's going to tell Unity how to create your asset bundles. So. I have a script in here that I already made. It's called create asset bundles. It goes in our editor folder and it's gonna create a menu item uh, inside assets that just says build asset bundles. And what this is gonna do is uh, create a new directory called asset bundles and it's going to create all these asset bundles and put them in that folder. Now, the important thing to note here is that asset bundles are platform specific. So you need asset bundles in our case for iOS and you need asset bundles for Android, okay? So let's, let's just run the script and generate our asset bundles. So if we go to assets, uh, build asset bundles, you'll see this is gonna take a minute, but it should create that folder for us. 
Okay, so now that script is done and you'll see that inside our asset bundles folder, we have uh, two asset bundles for each object, one for Android and one for iOS. So another thing that that um, editor script does is I have it append the platform name to the asset bundle. So capsule dash Android, capsule dash iOS. Um, that's gonna come in later, but we're gonna use those names to uh, basically load these files from the server. Okay, so now I guess we can delete these from the scene. And we need to actually get these files up on a server. So if we right click this and reveal in Finder, we wanna just upload this folder to a server. So I'm going to use um, uh, uh, Sublime with the SFTP plugin to do that, but you could use like uh, FileZilla or something like that, any type of like FTP client. So you'll see this is like my root directory for my website. Uh, there's really nothing on it right now, but let's move this old folder to the trash and I'm gonna drag in this asset bundle folder there. And then if I open up this in Sublime, what we can do is right click this folder, SFTP. Um, let's see, where do I do that? Upload folder. So this is going to upload this asset bundle folder to my website. Okay, so now we have everything uploaded to our server. So if we go back to the game view, you'll see these three buttons that I put here. These three buttons just call a function and pass in the name that we wanna load. So in this case, uh, button capsule is going to call this load content function and it's gonna pass in capsule, sphere passes in sphere and cube passes in cube, which if you notice, these are all um, what we named our asset bundles. So now if we go to, I put this content controller script on this content parent. If we open that up, you'll see that it has this public function that takes in the name of the asset bundle. It destroys all the children that are already there and then loads uh, the asset bundle, calls to this API script and gets the bundle. There is, I put in a uh, on content loaded callback. So if you wanted to do something here like play animations or play a sound or do whatever once that game object loads, you could do that all here. But let's go to this API script and see what it does, okay? So this get bundle object function takes in the asset name, which is like cube, capsule, or sphere, uh, takes in the callback, and then it takes in the transform, which is our content parent that we're going to instantiate the um, asset bundle and uh, use this as its parent. So down here in this coroutine, this is actually where we call to get the asset bundle. So my asset bundles are located at my website. So matthewhalberg.com slash asset bundles. And then inside this asset bundles folder is all those individual asset bundles. So we need to build out this URL in order to call and get this asset bundle to download. So um, our bundle URL is going to be the bundle folder, which is this directory on our website, plus the asset name dash the um, platform that the asset bundle is for. So here we can use this compile check compiler code and check if the platform is Android or iOS and then uh, append to the bundle or URL uh, appropriately. So either Android or iOS. So then we yeah, just use Unity web request asset bundle, pass in that bundle URL, and then we get back the um, asset bundle object, instantiate it, and then we can unload it. And then we just call our callback to do whatever functionality we want after that content is loaded. So let's test this out. Okay, you'll see that nothing happens. If we hit this capsule button, it's going to load this capsule from our uh, website and everything looks good. So I debugged the uh, bundle request URL, which in this case I'm on the Android platform. So it's gonna pass me the Android bundle so if we copy and paste this and say, put this into Google Chrome, you'll see that it will just download that asset bundle. Okay, so that is what we want. So now let's build this out and test it on the phone. Okay, so we're now here on the device. Let's detect the ground plane. And while that's detecting, let's actually hit any button so that something shows up when we click the screen. Okay, so we've got our ground plane. We click here, we've got our black capsule. We click sphere, that's gonna load our blue sphere. We click cube, that's gonna load our green cube. Okay, cool. Now to test this out, let's go back to the computer and without updating this app, let's just change the colors of these objects. Object materials and I don't know, black, let's make this red. Let's make our blue, I don't know, purple. 
And our green, let's make this, uh, I don't know, let's make it orange. Sure, okay, that looks cool. So now all of our stuff is gonna be different colors. So we can go uh, assets, build asset bundles again. Okay, cool. So let's right click this, reveal and finder, and then let's replace this folder over here. Oops, I accidentally put it in there. Okay, let's replace this folder here, cool. Now we have to re-upload this folder. So now back in our app, if we click capsule, yep, it is red, our sphere is purple, our cube is orange, and now we have just successfully updated our AR content without updating our app. One thing that I want to note here is that I remember, you know, before I said that you cannot have uh, shaders or C sharp scripts that are not included in the project on your asset bundles. Um, so I just want to reiterate, you can have scripts on these asset bundles. So say for example, one thing you might want to do is like, let's create a C sharp script and just call it um, AR event. Now, if we open this up in uh, Visual Studio, we can add something like, uh, I don't know, uh, public unity event, um, I don't know, on object placed. Oops, on object placed, and then we can make a public void um, object placed. And then we can call this unity event uh, whenever we call this function, so we can invoke it. Oops, invoke, very cool. Okay, so we can delete these. And then yeah, so if we go back into our prefab here, you can put this unity event on this object and then uh, you can add stuff to here. So say like you had an animation or say this thing had you know an audio source and you wanted to play a sound when this object is placed, you could drag this in here and we could do audio source dot play. So uh, the only caveat here is, yeah, this script needs to be included in your project. But if you're using something like a Unity event with an asset bundle, you could see how each object could have different functionality. So like one object could play an audio source, one could play an animation and so forth. So even though you can't have different scripts on each object, um, sorry, even though you can't have, you know, new scripts on each object, you can have each AR object, you know, perform different functionality. That's all I wanted to get across here. Now, another thing about this particular example project is it's not super dynamic because we have uh, buttons here, as you can see, for capsule, sphere, and cube. All these buttons are hard-coded. So one thing that you could do with Unity Asset Bundles is a couple people, you know, have asked about making an app like uh, Augment where you know, a user opens your app and it's shown like a list of possible content that you could place in AR. Um, so maybe what we could do in a future video, if you guys wanted, let me know in the comments, is we could make like a dynamic list. We could add a grid layout group to this canvas that allows it to accept uh, unlimited buttons just in a scroll view. Uh, what we could do is when the app loads, you could call to your server and that server could return to you a list of all of the objects in your asset bundle file or asset bundle folder and then create buttons for all those asset bundles and then um, those buttons could just load that content at runtime. So like say, you know, you wanted to add 20 new asset bundles to your app, you would just put them in that asset bundle folder and then, you know, Unity, your Unity script will be smart enough to load all of those buttons for those objects and then you'd end up with, uh, you know, a really interesting dynamic app that you can totally control from a server. So if that's something you guys want to do in the future, let me know in the comments and maybe in the next video we could do something like that. The other idea that I've been kind of playing around with for future videos is everyone still asks about doing indoor navigation in AR and uh, I keep waiting for like AR Foundation or something else to come out with like a free way to localize the device and it keeps not happening. So I'm thinking that maybe I could go down that path and just try to play with different like point cloud registration algorithms and see if we could, you know, localize cross-platform in AR. So yeah, that's all I got for today. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys want to see in the next video. And with that, we'll see you next time. Goodbye.